I'm, I, they said that I'm supposed to be introducing my book, so can I borrow this copy for a second? <laughs> okay, book, these are the readers. <laughs> and, and readers, here's the book, so ta-da! <laughs> um, a lot of times I'll go to a, a bookstore and uh, they'll be, okay, well, we, we want you to do a reading. They didn't really do that here, which I, I think is smart, because uh, I tend to assume that most of uh, my readers can, can read. <laughs> and they really don't need me to do it for them. So, uh, is it okay with you if we just like skip straight to question and answer? Is that okay? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's do that. For this to work, someone has to ask a question. Okay, good, excellent. Thank you, sir. No, uh, the book is dedicated to Bob, who was a prominent member of the forums, uh, uh, who died a couple of months ago. Uh, uh, so that's what that means. It wasn't actually to a, a makeup character. I have to talk about real people, and for the most part, in the in the dedication acknowledgement thing. So, <laughs> otherwise, people will catch up funny. Back, back here at the back, sir. Uh, I assume writing is still kind of a hobby for you. How do you keep it uh, from being an enjoyable experience rather than becoming a job? Uh, I, I don't keep it. Well, okay. Uh, the, que the question is, if, if, if everybody, everybody didn't hear it, uh, he's assuming writing is kind of a hobby for me. How do I keep it enjoyable instead of it being a job? And the answer is, it was always a job. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean I can't enjoy myself on while I'm on the job. Uh, uh, but I mean, you know, kind of from the get-go, it was something I was trying to do to make a living at. So uh, that has the advantage of, uh, of sometimes when you're writing, um, you'll be writing along and you'll plug along for several hours, and it's just like hitting your head against a brick wall. You know, at the end of six hours of trying, maybe I've got 750 or 1,000 words to show for it, if that. You know, other times I'll be writing, I'll get into the groove, I'll look up and all of a sudden uh, uh, it's, it's, it's 9 a.m. and there's actually people moving around the house and I've got five, you know, uh, 6,000, 7,000 words written. Uh, and I, I was having such a good time I didn't even notice. But when I get to the end of the book and go back and look at that, uh, I'll go, you know, I'm not able. I'm not actually able to tell the difference between the stuff that I had to grind out and the stuff that came out real smooth. Um, but you know, so the answer is it is a job. But I really like my job. <laughs> uh, uh, who else? I mean, uh, right here, please. Okay, let me, let me stop right here. How do I feel about all the fan fiction online that uses my characters? The answer to that is, I wasn't aware that there was any fan fiction <laughs> online on account of if I'm aware of it, I have to go and vigorously defend my copyright, which means I would have to go to some of the fans who like my work the most and who are so excited about it that they want to play with it themselves and tell them, go away, you bad, bad people, which would be stupid for me. So I'm really glad I don't know about fan fiction. <laughs> Okay, and there was, but there was a part two, so please go ahead. Actually, the second question is, if you play Hero Central, I was wondering, what's your favorite race and class to play? Um, uh, okay, I play, I play Nero Central, and I play a half-ogre Templar. I play a, a cannibal half-ogre Templar named Thud, who uh, is, 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 is too dumb to fool and always the first guy through the door, so, you know. Uh, that's always fun. I love going out playing the dumb guy. That's, that, that, that's just a great time. Uh, uh, who else? Right here, please. Uh, do you have a set plan for the stories, or does the, when you sit down to do an individual book, do you just know about that book and the characters lead you through it? question is, do I have a set plan for the stories, or when I sit down to do an individual book, uh, uh, do, do uh, uh, I just only plan for that book and do the characters lead me through it? And the answer is, I plotted all 20 books in 1996 um, uh, when I was getting started. Uh, the only thing I didn't plot was any of Harry's romantic stuff. I wanted that to be something that grew up by itself. But as it turns out, whoever you're in love with sometimes has an effect on the other parts of your life. But <laughs> who would have thought such a thing? So that's kind of given the plans a monkey wrench occasionally. Uh, but we're still pretty much on schedule. I'm, uh, I think I'm, a, I'm a one, about one book behind from where I would have planned on being. But we're doing all right. For something that got planned in 1996, it's, it's doing okay. Um, but anyway, so, but, yeah. Um, for those of us who are trying to get published, I know there's a story behind how you eventually got your first book published. Can you relate that? Um. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, for those who are trying to get published, can I relate the story of how I got my first book published? Um, I wrote my first novel when I was 19, uh, and it was awful. 
Um, and, uh, uh, but not to be stopped, I wrote a sequel, which was, if possible, even worse. <laughs> so I started taking some writing classes, and uh, professional writing courses at the University of Oklahoma, where they were actually being taught by a, a novelist. And uh, uh, I wrote another fantasy novel that was terrible, and then the second one in that series that was equally as bad. Uh, maybe not quite as bad, but almost. I tried hard. Uh, and then I did this X-Files takeoff thing. Uh, and the whole time, and it was, it was I mean, it was bad. I, I, wouldn't send, I wouldn't send that book to Osama bin Laden. I mean, <laughs> there's just some things you don't do. Um, and uh, the entire time I was, the entire time, I was getting very good advice from my writing teacher, which I was ignoring. Uh, I was ignoring her because... I have an English literature degree, and I knew what I was talking about, whereas she had merely published 40 novels. <laughs> so after that fifth one, and she was keep, she kept harping on the same things, and she was so wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, so finally, after that, after that fifth bad one, I decided, okay, you know what? The next book I write, I am just going to do everything she says. I am going to I'm going to fill out all her little worksheets. I'm going to do all her little character things. I'm going to do all this planning and plotting and and, and all this stuff, this completely artificial approach to storytelling, and, and when I get done with it, you know, I'm going to do everything just exactly like she says, and then she'll see what terrible crap comes out when I do that. And I wrote Stormfront. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, you know, and, and she still, to this day, has not admitted that she was wrong. <laughs> but uh, uh, having, having, having uh, uh, learned a bit of humility... Um, I went out looking for an agent, which she, she said, no, this will this will sell, you should be able to sell this. Uh, uh, and somebody else who was a, a friend of mine who was in the music business said, you know, what you really need to do if you want to pick up an agent is you need to get out and, and meet some of the agents and talk to them. And uh, so I said, okay, well, I, I took somebody else's advice once and it sort of, in, in kind of a bass backwards way, worked out. Uh, so I'll, I'll do this too. And I went to a convention where Laurel Hamilton was. Uh, I targeted an agent who was... Uh, 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 you know, they'd said, well, you know, if uh, if you're writing something that's sort of like what Laurel's writing, maybe if that agent liked Laurel's stuff, they'll like your stuff too. And that's uh, my reaction to that was, I don't know, that seems too rational. <laughs> uh, but I went to I went to that convention where Laurel was, and she was there with her agent, and I was on I was a fan on on several of Laurel's uh, uh, mailing lists, you know, fan lists, and uh, I, I gathered up a bunch of questions from the other from the other fans, and and at the mixer I introduced myself to Laurel and said, hey. I've got these questions from a fan list, and, and could I have five minutes of your time at some point? She's like, sure. And uh, then we hung out at the mixer talking about Buffy and Babylon 5. And all these other people walked up to her and, and wanted to talk to her about, uh, wanted to talk to her about uh, Anita Jean-Claude Richard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you could just kind of see her eyes go a little bit wide when they did. And, and uh, but it's, so I started deflecting the conversation, Buffy and Babylon 5, because we were both fans. Uh, and we wound up talking about that. And then the next day at the, at the convention, I'm wandering around bumping into walls, which is what I do when I don't have a, a keeper. And uh, 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 Laurel saw me and says, hey, Jim, a bunch of us are going to lunch. Uh, do you want to go with us? And I said, I eat lunch? <laughs> Mr. Suave right there. <laughs> and uh, I wound up going to lunch with Laurel and three other writers and three editors and a couple of agents. And as it turned out, they liked Buffy and Babylon 5, too. <laughs> and by the end of the weekend, both agents had offered to represent me. Uh, I turned to one of them and said, but, but Jen, who's my current, she's actually my current agent now. It's like, Jen, you, you, you sent me a rejection letter. She says, I know, two weeks ago. <laughs> she says, I know, but that was before I found out that, you, that you're somebody else who's actually played the Amber Diceless role-playing game. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, mostly my career has been about inspired stupidity. <laughs> But uh, but that was how, and then and then within six months of getting an agent, uh, uh, it was sold, and you know that was that was how that got going. So kind of a long answer to the question, uh, but there you go. Um, uh, right here, please. Any chance of seeing Harry on the screen again? Um, any chance of seeing Harry on the screen again? Um, I do. The, the the studio still has Lionsgate, still has the rights uh, until. Uh, two years, 364 days from now, not going to keep me track. <laughs> but they only have the rights to like the first five books. So, I mean, if somebody wanted to do book seven, you know, if somebody wanted to do Deadbeat or something like that as a movie, which, Zombie T-Rex, <laughs> that's a movie selling point right there. But if, 